Hi everyone, in my today's session, I am going to cover the topic associated with Azure storage accounts with respect to the blob service or I can say the file service. Okay, so let's start with it. So, how to upload or download files from an Azure storage account? Okay, as in my previous video, I have already explained that Azure storage account provides uh, three kinds of services that is blob service which is nothing but file service table service and then the queue service I have already explained the queue service in my previous session using the Azure right storage account emulator, but in this session I'm Going to make use of the actual Azure storage account resource on my Azure portal in order to demonstrate this blob service or you can say the file service so uh, what is the bare minimum requirement in order to make communication with the Azure storage account from your core is that you must install the nugget package azure.storage.blobs okay uh, this is the revamped package I can say because earlier uh, same thing we used to achieve using the windows.azurestorage.blobs uh, service kind of package but Microsoft has a uh, uh, refactored it seems uh, this particular library and they have provided with the name azure.storage.blobs and also they have renamed the objects okay functionality is same but only the object rename or class renaming has happened well that said uh, there are some uh, preconditions in order to run this program or I can say prerequisites so what I should have I must have an Azure account especially Azure portal account and I should have an Azure storage account created which I have and also I have extracted connection string for that particular storage account same thing you can achieve uh, using the Azure command line also by inserting this command okay and you have to specify your storage account name and the resource group basically okay but portal is the easiest way simply go there and extract the connection string details okay so well that is said now let's start uh, with the demonstration basically okay so I have to specify uh, my storage account name first of all uh, which uh, the storage account that I'm going to refer now uh, in order to upload or download my file and then I have to specify a container inside that storage account okay so what does this container uh, so just think of your storage account as a your hard drive okay okay your storage account is like your hard drive or you can say the root directory and inside that you have various subdirectories those subdirectories we can call as containers and those containers can have further sub, uh, subdirectories or files within them okay so somehow there is a resemblance with our file system so very easy to understand the concepts okay so what I'm going now so basically I'm going to get a reference to my container named uh, templates basically uh, here it's a sample container but my container name is templates over here okay so what I'm doing uh, using the blob container client class I'm going to extract I'm going to instantiate the container client object okay so what are the primary pieces of information or parameters that I need to pass for this constructor is the connection string to my storage account uh, in few moments I will show you how a connection string looks for a storage account and I think I have already explained it in my previous videos and then the container name with which I want to communicate in my case it's templates okay just for the information purposes I have put some console.write line statements where I say that whenever I construct a container client object I'm putting a statement that created container client object container dot create if not exists okay uh, this is a very useful and handy method suppose if if this container object uh, for which you have specified a container name to which it has to point to if it doesn't exist then using this method you can automatically create the container on your Azure portal okay so this particular method does that uh, job for us okay so that's why I have made a call create if not exists so if there is no container by name templates then it will create it for me that's cool and also uh, you can find the asynchronous version of all these methods like create if not exists async kind of uh, implementations also it's up to us as per our requirements uh, we can go with either synchronous or uh, synchronous implementations okay so 
get a reference to a blob named sample file in, in my case I have made use of a flag.png file so in Azure storage accounts okay a blob is nothing but a file a binary large object okay so what is my file basically my file is this one the blob name basically flag.png a simple file okay that I have made use of so what I am doing now I'm taking a reference to blob client basically I'm constructing a blob client okay in order to create a blob client for this file name okay or you can say the blob name basically okay so whenever you make use of blob name right okay so using this name only if you upload a new file that file will be created with this name okay do understand this okay while uploading you can give any file name you can give any file name but when it is created on your Azure blob basically it is created with the blob name okay so always make sure uh, you give same names okay so that uh, your file name also resembles with your blob name basically okay so what I'm doing I'm I have constructed a blob client object now in order to make communication with this okay now what I'm saying I put another informational or trace statement got reference to the file or blob name now I'm going to upload a local file which is from my file system which is over here so blob dot upload the file name which is a simple flag engine flag basically okay uh, so what does this uh, upload function do this upload method will upload this image file to my blob storage okay so once it is successfully uploaded I am putting a message uploaded the file now once a uh, file has been successfully uploaded okay uh, you can very easily uh, view the file on my Azure storage container basically or on storage account uh, let me show that quickly so if I come here yeah so this is my Azure storage account inside that there are many containers okay out of that what, which container I have picked I have picked the templates container to put my file so if you see if you see this flag.png this is the file which will be uploaded to my uh, blob container basically okay this is how it will look okay a blob type as a block blob access tier is hot and you can find the date and see the blob name flag.png whichever I had mentioned in my code okay so for a demonstration purpose I will run this program now and before that one more important thing once a file has been uploaded okay if I want to download it okay uh, there are some criteria basically so if your storage account has been created with private access there are two types of accesses uh, friends uh, private access and public access if a storage account by default whenever you create it is created with private access and same access level applies to the containers and then the blobs inside the containers so by default if it is a private then your container is also private and your all the blobs which you upload or the files you upload they are all private in nature so you can't simply refer to their URL by extracting a URL from this particular uh, file you can't simply view it from your browser you have to authorize yourself in order to view that and in order to authorize you have to generate a, a shared access security token or SAS token uh, for this okay so this is the case with respect to private blobs or private storage containers and in very rare case scenarios you will create public blobs or public storage accounts okay or containers also okay in case of public storage accounts what happens is even if your storage account has been set to access level of public okay by default the container doesn't be uh, doesn't having access level of public you have to explicitly go and make it this container public okay again once you made the container public if you go inside the blobs by default the blobs are not public in nature you can't directly access again you have to explicitly set them public okay so this is how the things work here so in my case I have private storage account and yes all my container and blobs are private so I need to generate a SAS token in order to access them or download them basically so what I'm going to do uh, there is an API provided by this particular namespace uh, which is azure.storage.blobs which contains the azure.storage.sas okay so how do we achieve that let's quickly go through that okay 
So what I'm doing is once my file has been uploaded successfully now I'm extracting a SAS token for it. Okay, so if you go to this method what all information I need I need an account name I need a storage account key. Okay, storage account name is nothing but uh, your storage account name using which you have created that resource and account keys are basically the secret keys using which you can access this storage account without that you can never made access to this storage accounts okay so storage account by default gives two keys okay two secret keys and we can make use and we can make any one of them for our usage basically okay so i have kept it into app.config file and i don't want to reveal it okay so please bear with me so what i'm going to do now i have passed my account name i passed my account key and then my blob client which i had constructed here to upload my file this client took the responsibility of uploading okay now this client itself you takes the responsibility of giving me an sas token uh, for my uploaded file so that i can I can construct a URL which can be viewed into my web browser basically okay so what I'm doing I'm building a blob SAS builder object okay now what are the primary pieces of information that I need to pass first thing the blobs container name which is templates what is the blob name that's flag.png and when this particular SAS token will expire I have given an expiration of five minutes after five minutes whatever token you had generated to access this file will expire see the granularity see the authorization level okay you can't have a sas token for indefinite period even if you can create it but in most of the real world scenarios we don't create such indefinite uh, sas tokens basically okay they are for periodic purposes now what i'm going to do using blob sas builder dot i will set the permission what permission i would like to set for this token i want to set a blob sas permission of read i can only read this file that's it i can't write it i can't modify it on the blob okay now using the blob sas builder so what i say i call the two sas query parameters okay this method will take a storage shared key credentials object which will basically contain your account name and account key using which it will construct the sas token for you okay so once this method has been called with this parameter you will get the sas token so what you have to do your blob client will always contain reference to your blob which you are dealing with basically so just now we dealt with this client what we did we uploaded a file okay now using this blob client only i will refer to its uri and i will get a absolute uri of that file and then i will put a question mark and construct a query string parameter sas token okay this sas token is basically a query string parameter okay so simply put a question mark and append it your url is ready in order to make uh, make it use in your web browser to access the file so if i return from this method i will get the document uri now what i say i have generated sas token now i'm loading the file in web browser a simple a process class from system.diagnostics using which i will start a process and pass my chrome browser's exe file with a parameter or command line parameter you can say the document uri or the file uri which i want to open so let me run this program quickly and i will show you how it works so it should open a console so my program has run now uh, as you can see okay so if i go to the console window basically see you can see my steps created a container client got reference to the file or blob name uploaded the file generated sas token and then loading the file in browser okay so if i go to my browser window now if I come to my browser window see the file has been automatically downloaded and if I click on it I should see my Indian national flag okay so this is how we should make various file management or document management related operations with Azure storage blob service okay and uh, Azure storage account is specifically meant for document management as I have already explained in my previous videos so 
it it answers almost each and every question associated with our document management and it is secure and uh, yeah there is no need to write uh, or no need to reinvent the wheel of document management we can strict we can straight away go with azure storage accounts blob service to achieve this functionalities for our enterprise grade applications okay so that's it from today's session i hope you people understood and you people will apply in your day by day development okay thank you for listening and have a nice day